Okay, so I'm going to be responding to the affirmative claims of uh, their, their inherency, significance, and, uh, I'm sorry, um, their inherency, significance, and insolvency claims. Um, in response to the affirmative uh, inherency claim, that U.S. immigration policy against illegal immigrants has failed over the last decades. Um, according to Ralph Boschman of the U.S. News, he states that the strategy is working, the current strategy is working more than offense alone, uh, more than offense alone would. The volume of illegal crossings on the southwest border is down uh, of elite, uh, dramatically from a peak of 1.6 million apprehensions in the fiscal year 2000 to only about 350,000 apprehensions in 2011. And that basically means that there's less people coming to the country, and in some cases there's some leaving. So um, it's not necessarily failing in that regard. And then in response to the significance claim that illegal immigrants create harm to US citizens and taxpayers, uh, according to Eric, Eric Pickman of the Fiscal Times, he basically states that the 50 state analysis by the Institutes of Taxation and Economic Policy released on Thursday and found that roughly 8.1 million of 11.1, 11, of 11.4 million undocumented immigrants who work paid then 11.8 .8 billion in the state and local taxes in 2012, even when they were living illegally in the country. So they're paying their taxes in that regard and they're contributing to society. So in that sense, they're not really hurting us. And to further that, uh, David, David Al Adam of uh, the New York Times basically stated that labor economics have concluded that undocumented workers have lowered the wages of US adults without a high school diploma, uh, to 25 million of them by anywhere between 0 0.4 to 0 to 7.4 percent. The impact on everyone else, though, is surprisingly positive. So, basically, like yes, the illegals hurt those who don't have uh, high school diplomas, but everybody else benefits off of them because they work jobs that all of us don't want to, and they keep the prices of those goods and services down. So it's a small, it's a small price to pay for you know greater outcome. And in response to the the claim of crime rates, uh, according to Alan Gomez of US, USA Today, it says that while they represent just 3.5 of the U.S. population, un, undocumented immigrants represented 7% of federal prison sentences following convictions on charges of sexual abuse, 9% of murders, 12% of assaults, 30% of kidnappings in 2013. Case closed, right? Far from it. Only a tiny percentage of the nation's violent crimes are handled by the federal court system. Yes, undocumented immigrants account for 9.2% of federal murder convictions in 2013. But that is a representative that represents a grand total of eight murder cases. When you consider that the FBI estimates that there were 14,196 murders in the US in 2013, those few cases handled by the federal court system don't quite register as a reliable sample set. The sample goes for the other violent crimes cited in those statistics. Add the fact that undocumented immigrants are far more likely to be caught up in the federal court system because of nonviolent immigration violations and the numbers shouldn't mean much. And in that sense, it's basically saying that they're, because they're illegal immigrants, they're gonna be tried in federal court, not um, state courts. And because of that, um, the numbers offset each other. And in regard to the the healthcare for the healthcare con contributions from illegal immigrants. Um, it says that elite undocumented immigrants um, provided a surplus of 35.1 billion to the Medicare trust fund between 2000 and 2011. And Tom McCarthy of the Guardian states that the last. Um, I'm sorry. And. 
in now in, in regarding their solvency claim that a plan based on deport, deportation of illegal aliens would reduce the harms created by them. Um, and to do that, they basically stated that building a wall and mass deportations will solve the problem. But uh, Tom McCarthy of The Guardian basically states that the last large-scale roundup of U.S. residents by the federal government, uh, the internment of the Japanese descents during the Second, Second World War, ultimately encompassed only about 110 arrest, arrestees, most of whom originally lived in a few major cities on the West Coast. They were moved into camps on the western states, not across an international border. There, there are 100 times the number of undocumented immigrants currently living in the United States, according to a Pew Research Center analysis of government data. And the migrants are not regionally clustered. They live everywhere. So you know, to basically summarize that, there's more, li uh, there's more immigrants. They're spread out. So asking the government to basically take on the role of, you know, detaining 11.3 million of them, it's, it's more difficult. And